path of length n from the vertex u to v is the sequence of n edges for which there exists a sequence of vertices such that ith edge has an end point xi minus 1 and xi. That means, means if you want to travel from the vertex u to v and suppose this value is equal to x0 and v is equal to xn. So for that we need to travel from x0 to x1 by an edge e1 then from x1 to x2 by an edge e2 and then x2 to x3 by an edge e3 and so on and xn minus 2 to xn minus 1 by an edge en minus 1 to xn that is a v vertex by an edge e3. So in general a path is a sequence of edges that begins from the vertex and travel to the vertex along with edges. For example, in this case, suppose you want to write a path that starts from D. So you can start from a vertex D and travel through the edges. Suppose the first path I am defining in this case is D to A, then A to C, C to back A, then back to D and again go back to A. So this is a path. So how we are moving? So in this case, we are traveling first from D to A then C, then we are going back and then we are moving again back to the D and again we are going back to the A. So this is the path. We are walking on the vertices through an edge. So now what is the length of this path? For that just count the number of edges in this path. So first edge is this one, then second, third, fourth and five. So it is a path of length five. Moreover, you can count from here D to A one edge, then A to C second edge, then C to A third edge, A to D fourth edge and then D to A fifth edge. So total number of edges involved in this path is 5. So it is a path of length 5. So the next term is a circuit. A path is a circuit if it begins and ends at the same vertex as well as the length of that path is greater than equal greater than 0. For example, in this case, we can consider a path as A, B, C, D, E, B, A. So this is a path we have traveled from A vertex to B, then B to C, C to D, D to E, then B, then we are moving back to A. So here it is a path where end points are same. It means now it is categorized as a circuit even A, B, A. So this is a also a circuit because the end points are same and it is a path. So start from A, move to the B, then go back to the A. So it is a path. We have started from a vertex A and we have come back to the A. So and the length of this circuit is 2 because in this case we have traveled through the two edges whereas the length of the circuit is so A to B one edge, then B to C second edge, then C to D third edge, then D to E fourth edge, E to B fifth, then fifth, B to A sixth. So there are six edges in this case. It means it is a circuit of length six. Now what about this one? Is this is a circuit or a path? So first we need to identify whether it is a path or not. Then we will comment about the circuit. So A to B, then B to C, C to D, then D to E. Yes, it is a path. Now end points are different. It means it is only a path. But not circuit. There is another word that is a simple path. A path or a circuit is a simple if it does not contain same edge more than once. Now the question is, is this is a simple path? So let's take it. So A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E. In this case, we are moving from a vertex A to E along the distinct edges. It means this is a simple path. What about this one? Is this is a path? So let's take it A to D. Now there is no edge from A to D or we can say there is a no edge between A and D. 
so clearly this is not a path what about next one b to c c to d d to e then b so here it is a path whose end points are same so it means it is a circuit now the point is it is a simple circuit so answer is yes in this circuit we are working on the distinct edges so yes it is a simple circuit and what is the length of the circuit that is a 4 move to the next one a to b b to c then c to d then d to e e to b so now it is a path whose end points are different it means it is not a circuit now check it whether it is a simple so answer is yes because the we are considering the distinct edges in this case so yes it is a simple path now there are two remarks Every cycle that is a CN when N is greater than or equal to 3 is a circuit but the converse is not true. So cycle of the length 3. So this is a cycle of length 3. So in this case we have suppose we have started from A vertex. Then we are moving to the vertex B then C and back to the A. So this is a circuit. It is a path whose end points are same. Moreover it is a simple circuit. You can also check for the C4. So again we are getting a circuit with a length 4. We have started from this vertex. Then we are moving to the second one. Then the third one. Third to the fourth. And then back to the one. So the end points are different in this path. Means it is a circuit. Moreover it is a simple circuit. But the converse is not true. So take this example. So this is a circuit. But it is not a simple circuit. What about the cycle? Whether it is a cycle? So in this case we are taking only two vertices. But we know that the cycle defined for n greater than or equal to 3. So now we will put a condition to create a circuit in form of a cycle. That is a circuit in a graph is called, called cycle. If no vertices is repeated except end point. As well as n is greater than or equal to 3. There are some another terminologies for these terms. That is a path is also called as a walk in some literature books. And simple path is called as a trail. And the circuit is called as a closed path. Counting path between vertices with the help of adjacency matrix. So let G is a graph with the adjacency matrix A with respect to the ordering of vertices as V1, V2 up to Vn. In this case we are considering N vertices. So the number of different parts of length R from the vertex I to the J is equal to I, J entry of A raised to power R matrix where R is the positive number. For example, you need to count the number of path of the length 4 from the vertex A to D in this simple graph. So very first we will construct the adjacency matrix. So first we will write the adjacency matrix. For that we need to define the order of that matrix. So total number of vertices are 4. So matrix order in this case is 4 cross 4. Then we will define the ordering of vertices. Suppose the ordering of vertices in this case is A, B, C, D and same for the row wise. So after defining the ordering of the vertices we will fill the entries in this case. So first we will take the first vertex A. So A vertex is adjacent with B and C. It means for the row 1. The second column entry is 1 as well as the third column entry is 1 for row 1. Next is a B. So B is adjacent with A and D. So this entry is 1 and this entry is 1 and the rest are the zeros. And C is adjacent with A and D. So A and D. Rest are zeros. So D is adjacent with B and C. And the rest entries are 0. So this is the adjacency matrix for this graph G. 
Now we need to calculate the number of path from a vertex A to D of length 4. What do you mean by length 4? It means we need to find a path that have 4 edges. So next we will calculate A raised to power 4 in order to find the path of length 4. So the 4th power of this matrix is equal to this. So now we will use this result the number of different parts of length R. Now we need the length 4 from a vertex A to D is equal to I comma J. So A corresponds to the first row and D corresponds to the fourth row. So we need to find 1 comma fourth entry of A raised to power 4 from this matrix. So 1 comma 4. So this is the pivot element. So this pivot element gives you the number of different paths. So number of different paths. of length 4 from vertex A to D for the given graph G. So the total answer in this case is 8.